Alright, anybody wants to open us in prayer? Okay, David. Thank you so much. Thank you, God. I hope everybody enjoy it. And I hope everybody make an A in their test. And I hope that the fruit and dwarf to talk today. And I hope that everybody be good in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And thank you for the prayer. Amen. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's go over your uh, scriptures. Scripture. Scripture. Okay, so first grade. Your scripture is Luke 137. Let's read it. Luke 137. For with God, nothing will be impossible. All right, second grade, your memory scripture. Oh, not that. Matthew 5, 16. Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine for men that they may see your good work and glorify your Father in heaven. Matthew 5, 16. 5, 16. Okay, awesome. All right, so we've been talking about Joshua and his leadership and how he is the one that is leading the Israelites through the promised land. And so yesterday in our lesson, we discussed how after they had conquered the city of Jericho, the Lord had given a command that they were not, they were to give all of the spoil. And remember, I told you the spoil is like all the treasures, the silver, the gold, all of what they found in the city, they were supposed to give it to the Lord, right? But there was a man named Achan who secretly kept some of the spoil for himself. It was a robe and a bar of gold and some pieces of silver that he found. And he was like, no one's going to know I took it. No one will know that, I, um, that I'm that i keeping this for myself. He was like, I'm going to go ahead and hide it. And he did that. So he took it and he went and hid it under his tent. And so after this, the next city that the next nation that they were going to conquer was the city of Ai. And it was a very small city, weren't a lot of people. So Joshua felt like they would be able to defeat this city easily. So he only sent a few soldiers to go and conquer the city. But little did he know, AI actually ran the Israelites off. And the Israelites actually did not defeat them like he thought they would. So whenever they got back, he's like, what happened? And they told him um, that the city of Ai was too strong for them. And Joshua's like, that's strange. He's like, we just beat the city of Jericho with the city of the city that had walls. And we can't defeat this smaller city of Ai. So Joshua was a little confused. He didn't understand what was going on and what happened. So when he went to the Lord and prayer about it, the Lord had told Joshua that, um, they lost this. They lost that battle because there was sin in the camp, and so Joshua did not understand why how there was sin. No one did anything wrong, but the Lord said, "Yes, someone did do something wrong. Someone stole something out of the city of Jericho when I told them not to." And so they went through it. Uh, they went through all of the people in the land, and they found out that it was Achan, and Achan and his family were stoned because of his sin of stealing from the Lord. So uh, after this, the Lord gave them a battle plan to go uh, and fight and defeat the city of AI. And they did. Remember I told you some of the soldiers had attacked from the front and then some of the soldiers attacked from the back and they were able to conquer the city. So the Lord had given them the victory and everyone also learned their lesson not to take from the Lord. But I told you guys that the Lord had really only wanted the spoil from the first city because after they defeated the city of AI, they were able to keep all of the spoil. They were, whatever they found was theirs. So you see if Aiken would have waited, look what he could have gotten if he just was patient and waited on the Lord. So word is going around the nation to different nations and everyone is hearing about how the Israelites are conquering different nations, how they are having uh, multiple victories, how the Lord is giving them strength. And a lot of the other nations are hearing about this and they're a little scared about it because they were like, we don't want the Israelites to defeat us, even though there was nothing they could do. 
So five different nations, five kings decided to get together and they were like, we're going to partner up together. We're going to put our armies together. We're going to be five different armies and we're going to go and fight against the Israelites. There is no way they will be able to defeat us or, you know, beat us because of what, uh, because of us five coming together. So they thought. And so Joshua he heard about what was going on with these nations. He found out about it and he was a little concerned. He was like, Lord, there's five nations at one time coming against us. He's like, Lord, what do we do? That's a lot of soldiers to fight and to defeat. And so the Lord told Joshua not to be afraid. He says, for they are already defeated. The Lord said, Joshua, I have given them into your hand. And that's encouraging, right? Because Joshua was thinking, how is this going to happen? How will this work? And little did he know, the Lord is like, I already gave, I'm giving you the victory already, Joshua. You don't even have to worry about it. And so, um, so the Lord said, go and fight and you will be have victory. So Joshua got the Israelite army together and they went and they marched to where those five nations were camped because they were, they were confident that God would give them the victory. And so whenever they arrived, the soldiers, everyone was shocked, right? Because they didn't think the Israelites were going to come to them. So they were shocked and they were surprised. But the battle began. And so the Israelites, this one army began to fight against a nation a, a nation that had five armies together. And so it was a tough battle. It was a battle that was going on all day. It was a very hard battle for the Israelites. It wasn't easy. It was tough, you know, but they fought and they fought. And soon after they had been, I mean, not long after they, well, after they were fighting for a long time, nightfall was soon to come and Joshua did not want his soldiers to fight into the nighttime right because that can get more dangerous they could lose more soldiers and you know you don't want to fight at night right so Joshua is like Lord you're gonna have to do something Lord you're gonna have to do something so that you know so that we have more daytime where we're not fighting this battle all the way into the night and so Joshua praying and he said and he said sun and moon stand still and guess what happened? The sun and the moon stood still. Yeah, it's like the Lord stopped everything. You know, the, the sun comes out and then the moon follows at night. But it's like the Lord paused everything. And the sun stayed out longer than what it normally would. And so that was a good thing, right? Because that means they had more daytime. And so the Lord, he heard Joshua's prayer. Joshua had faith that God could do it. And the Lord literally paused everything and stopped everything in that moment. And so it's like the Lord made it stand still. It's like the everything just stopped. They were still fighting, but it's like, you know, y'all get what I'm saying? Like it just, it just froze into time. The sun froze, the moon froze, and it, it just all stopped. And so the Lord stopped everything for Joshua so they would have more daytime during the battle. So they fought and they fought and they fought. Now, the Israelite army was getting a lot of, was having a lot of victory over the five nations. And so when the kings of the five nations saw how they were losing the battle, they decided to run. They were like, okay, we're losing the battle. Let's escape. So they escaped and went and hid and hid in a mountain. And so Joshua learned that the kings had escaped. Now, how do kings leave their nation, right? That's not a good king. You leave your people. But they left their people. And so when Joshua heard that they went and hid in a cave, he sent soldiers to go and find the cave and to roll a stone in front of the cave that would trap the kings inside of the cave. And so they continued to fight the battle. They continued to go. And finally, after fighting for what felt like forever, the Israelites had the victory, just like the Lord had promised Joshua when he told Joshua, he says, you don't have to worry about it. The victory is yours. I already have given you all authority, everything over these nations. And sure enough, God kept his promise. And Joshua and the Israelite army were able to defeat five different armies at one time. The Lord also stood the earth still for them, the sun and the moon still for them. So they would have more time that so that nightfall wouldn't come. So they would have more time to fight and defeat them. 
After the battle was over, Joshua went to get the five kings. And of course, he executed the five kings. So now five nations were destroyed. So that's a good thing for the Israelites, right? So they now have Jericho. They have the city of Ai. And now they have these five nations. So that's seven nations that the Israelite army has defeated. The Lord has given them victory over seven different nations, right? And remember, guys, they weren't this big army, right? They, they learned how to fight the Lord taught them and strengthened them as the army. And we see how they're growing and how God is with them and he's giving them all these victories. And so they're taking back their land, right? That's the whole purpose of them doing this. They're taking back their land. These nations have taken their land. So they're taking the land back and making it their own again. And so Joshua and the Israelite army through the power of the Lord were able to defeat these five kings. So these five kings thought, that by having five together, there was like, there's no way they're going to be this. But little did they know the Lord would give Joshua and the army victory. And he did. And so he destroyed the kings and destroyed their nations. And so, again, we see how the Lord has given them victory yet again. So this is encouraging, right? Because this could have happened with their parents, right? But their parents didn't believe God enough. And look how, you know, they had to die in the wilderness, but the children, now they're adults, they believe God and look at how much victory God is giving them. And, and remember, they get to keep all of the spoils. So not only are they having victories, but they get to keep all of the treasure that they find. So it's an amazing thing. Amen. Amen. All right. Awesome. So guys, that's our lesson today on the five nations and how God gave the Israelite army the victory over these five nations. And God made the sun and the moon stand still for them during this time. Okay. All right. So that's our Bible lesson for this morning, guys, on Joshua. And tomorrow will be our last lesson on Joshua. Yeah, we have Joshua was a little shorter than a lot of our uh, other lessons that we've covered. Okay.